Okay, today we're talking about the music production stages. When I talk about music production with people, I like to break it down into three stages. You've got recording, mixing, and mastering. In this video, we're just going to break it down and talk about the different activities and sort of explain those different stages and how they're different from one another. So first off, the recording stage. There are different types of recording. Um, this is when we're capturing all the different sounds that we want. So we're gathering things, right? We're setting up microphones. We're preparing to record particular sound sources and instruments. But there's also some important terms here that you need to understand. So one of the methods that we record music is called tracking. This is when we've got, think of it like a four-piece rock band. You've got a lead singer, a guitar player, a bass player, and a drummer. When you're tracking, you're, you're setting up for a recording session where you're going to record all of those elements all at once. So yes, we're multi-track recording, but we're tracking them, meaning that we're doing it all simultaneously. And we do this for a couple of reasons. One, and the easiest explanation is just that it's going to give us like a nice set of like core recordings, like a basis for ultimately what is going to become a finished product, right? But there are also some particular genres of music that lend themselves to this method of recording. I'm thinking particularly, well, I talked about the rock band kind of thing, and sure, tracking is an important method there. Um, but even more specific would be something like a jazz ensemble. And the reason why tracking is an important method of recording for that type of genre is because you're not going to like record a, a jazz ensemble and then go back and record other individual things and add to that recording. No, it, it's, it's spontaneous. It happens that one time. And you oftentimes, at least again in this jazz example, you've got to have some line of sight and some sort of like interaction between the musicians because it's again, very spontaneous method of music. It's reactive based on what this musician is doing. This musician might do something different. So during that tracking session, you need to be able to set up microphones and set up the band in such a way where we can isolate each individual element as best we can so we can have the cleanest recording of each one of those things. But basically we know that there's going to be no removing some of the bleed over from one microphone to the next. We're just trying to set things up in a way where it's, it's we, the least offending result, right? We also want to keep in mind that we want the musicians to be able to perform and react the way that they normally would without all the recording equipment. So you can't be putting microphone stands in people's way and have cables that are being worried about. So all that stuff needs to be a consideration during the recording process. So oftentimes we're doing things like tracking a band first, then if we're, say, let's go back to the rock band example, we might want to re-record some of those elements in what's called the overdubbing sessions. So let's say that we bring in the four-piece rock band and we have some tracking sessions and we record uh, all these different takes of different songs that the, the musicians have, right? But again, during the tracking session, we're probably using our um, lesser quality microphones to pre prevent some bleed over from other sound sources. In the overdubbing stage, what we'll do is take each individual musician into a controlled environment like a recording studio, set up with our better microphones, condenser microphones, and more sensitive ones, because now we, only, we won't have to worry about the other sound sources getting in the way, because we're going to isolate very specifically one source. Let's just say it's the electric guitar. So we will allow the musician to hear the content from the tracking session and re-record their guitar parts in the overdubbing session. Right? So we're adding these overdubs, these extra recordings, back to the original. And oftentimes what we'll do is we'll replace the performances from the tracking session. And once we do that for all the other instruments and musicians, then we have new unique recordings from overdubbing sessions that are, have all completely replaced the tracking session material. Um, but we've effectively got higher quality recordings with better quality instruments that make up our new finished product from the overdubbing sessions. It also gives us the opportunity to layer multiple sounds on top, right? We might record multiple versions of rhythm guitar. We might re-record um, that guitar solo a hundred times and piece it together so that we get the perfect super take, right? 
So the overdubbing sessions can be important in perfecting things uh, and replacing less than stellar audio from a tracking session, depending on what kind of genre you're working with. And then finally in the recording stage, there's a process that uses MIDI technology. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface and has become more and more prominent in the recording phase because what we can do is use this technology with a MIDI controlled keyboard and you can basically associate that keyboard with virtual instruments and samples and other kinds of sounds and you can create all sorts of recordings well, performances that are recorded in, with MIDI technology that aren't actually recordings of real sounds at all, more like triggers for existing sounds or synthesized sounds. And then, of course, we can use a combination of all these different things. We might have a tracking session, do some overdubs, throw in some MIDI virtual instrument stuff, and continue doing overdubs, and add a whole bunch of layers of things, and that eventually is going to lead us to our finished product. So, okay. Uh, in phase one of music production, you've got recording, and there's different methods of recording. We can use MIDI technology. We could also have tracking sessions and overdub sessions that uh, ha each have their own benefits. Stage two in music production is the mixing stage. Here is where we've gathered all the pieces, right? So if recording is gathering the pieces, mixing is arranging those pieces to like take, make a puzzle. Right? So we're, we want to complete the puzzle in the mixing stage. We want to first address any issues that came out of the recording sessions. We're not going to go back and record anymore, so we need to fix some of the problems if at all possible. That means using either hardware or internal plugins through your digital audio workstation to equalize, to compress, uh, and, and fix audio issues with the recordings. The other thing we're going to do is balance all the different elements. Usually we're dealing with either stereo or surround sound, so we can take this opportunity to pan things from around in stereo space, so not, so not everything is just coming at us from the same location, right? We can have some sounds that come from the right ear, some things that come from the left ear, and so on. Um, but we also want to balance in, uh, volume from one element to the next. We, we want to make sure that maybe during the recording process, certain elements were recorded a little bit hotter than others. This is our opportunity to balance those things out and make sure that they uh, sound good in relation to the other things that are around it. And then finally, we're gonna get creative with some things. Maybe we wanna add reverb to a voice um, to give it some perspective, some sense of uh, acoustic spaciousness, right? Maybe we want to really enhance, we want the um, we want the drum and especially the kick drum to be really thick and huge so we add layers and we compress and we do parallel processing to make things much bigger than they were initially. Um, there's different artists that have uh, different uh, aesthetics on their vocals. For example, uh, Will I Am of the Black Eyed Peas or whatever always has some flange, which is a, a unique sort of uh, audio effect on his voice. This is where we can get really creative to um, just make things stand out or sort of put a little signature stamp on some things. So stage one is recording, gathering the pieces to the puzzle. Stage two is putting those puzzle pieces together. Stage three is mastering. Mastering is when you take the finished puzzle and then you like put that lacquer on it and you frame it and you hang it on the wall. Mastering is the very subtle um, finishing touches on a piece of audio before we can say it's complete. Now there are some arguments that say that, well there's some people that say that mastering is the final stage in music production and there's some people that say that mastering is actually the first stage in distribution. Now regardless of how you think of it, you've got to understand what's included in mastering. So it's taking a fully mixed project and this is your final line of defense. If there's anything still left that stands out as problematic, you need to fix it in mastering. This is the final step for that. Um, we also need to maximize loudness. It also has to do with creating, say, like if we were making an album, it would be about track sequencing, determining which, which song goes in which place on the album, right? And how much is there a flow from one track to the next track? Do they overlap? Is there a space in between? All those kind of decisions are made during mastering. Is the dynamic range similar amongst all tracks? Um, 
and and what effect does that have uh, is there any reason why we would want to do things a little bit differently there um, mastering is a very subtle art form you've got to be really well trained you have to train your ears to look for very particular frequency problems or issues um, and you have to have a very controlled environment in which to do the mastering activities acoustically treated you have to have um, access to very high-end equipment in order to make some adjustments in this area um, but mastering uh, I like to to say that mastering engineers are like the Jedi's of the audio world so to recap um, what you've got to do in music production the three stages recording mixing and mastering stage one you record you gather all the pieces to your puzzle stage two you put the puzzle pieces together uh, as best you can and stage three hopefully you can polish that finished product up and hang it on the wall so there's your music production stages thanks for watching